So the elephant in the room here is, can a YouTube polyglot, God, I hate that term, can a YouTube polyglot make a video about YouTube polyglots lying? And would you believe me if I did? Well, I'm gonna try. First of all, though, a bit of housekeeping. This is a controversial video and I almost didn't make it. I'm still not sure if making this video is the right thing to do, but I get questions on this all the time. So I wanted to address it and I wanted to do it in my way. So there are gonna be three things, housekeeping if you like for this video. First of all, I'm not gonna mention any names. Those of you who are baying for blood, you're not gonna get that here. Secondly, this is going to be a constructive video. Most videos I find on this topic are not really very helpful. So my hope is that my ideas here are going to give you a new constructive take on this whole world. And thirdly, I'm making this for a very specific kind of person. I'm making this video for you if you are someone who's trying to learn a new language and is looking for a way to kind of navigate this field of YouTube and the polyglots and language learners that you see here. We're not going to play a game of who is the best polyglot. Those are the three rules. As you'll see, a bit of a spoiler alert, this is going to be a fairly positive take on the whole thing, but there is one thing in particular which does make my blood boil somewhat, and you'll hear about that at the end of the video. So what exactly is a polyglot? We should define it, right? It seems like a good place to start, given that it's the topic of this video. I personally really dislike the word polyglot. It seems to bring with it an awful lot of baggage, especially in the English language. I'd never used this word in my life until I discovered YouTube. I'd been learning languages for like 15 years or so, and then one day I discovered the word of language learning on YouTube, and there were all these people referring to themselves as polyglots, and I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, I kind of got used to it over time, I guess, but I do feel this word brings with it a lot of baggage, and there's so much airtime spent discussing if you're a polyglot or not, and I think it's a royal waste of time. People, There are people that say, well, you're not a true polyglot unless you speak I don't know, five languages to a C2 level, you know, native-like level. I personally, I really don't have strong feelings about this. I think in, in, I don't think it matters all that much. I come from a background of learning languages to make my life better. So I'm very resistant to labels, but it is relevant to know, I think, whether or not you can be considered to speak a language. And personally, I have something, I have a litmus test for whether you can speak a language or not. And I call it the pub test. And it is as follows. If we can go to a pub, sit down and speak in a, in another language with a drink, and we can enjoy the conversation without either of us kind of bending our language to, to cater to the other person too much, then I think you can say that you speak that language. And so for me, I think if you were to press me at what a polyglot is, I'd say if you can speak three foreign languages at a pub test level, then in my book, you can call yourself a polyglot. And for the purposes of this video, that's the definition we're gonna use. I understand if you disagree with me, I just don't really care. By the way, the contents of this video, all the topics we're gonna to cover come from a post I made in the community tab of my YouTube channel. We've got over 200 responses to this. Uh, and so if you want to join in these conversations like this and contribute to future videos, then make sure to subscribe to the channel because I often ask my audience what they think about videos I'm about to make. So moving on from the question of whether you're actually allowed to call yourself a polyglot or not, one of the most common criticisms you see of YouTubers is that you're not fluent. You say you're such and such a level, you say that you speak Spanish, you're fluent in Spanish, but you're actually only A2 level. It's arguments over the level that someone is. And this is a criticism that is probably the most common criticism you see. He's not fluent, he's only this. And I find it very unfortunate that this is the kind of thing that people focus on. And I think the reason I feel this way is that I come from a place, from a country and a culture where no one learns foreign languages. You know, well, I started learning languages when I was 19 years old. French was my first language. And I was the only person amongst my entire French friendship group that took the time to learn or had a, even had any interest in learning languages. And I remember like when I would, after learning my first couple of languages, whenever I came across someone, especially a British person who also learned languages, it would be like I'm meeting, I'm meeting a soulmate, you know, and I would just, I would respect so much anyone that had taken the time to learn a language. And then afterwards, later in my life, when I went off and used my languages all around the world, like the idea that you should be criticized for the, for the level that you speak a language is just harmful and toxic. And my starting point is always that anyone that speaks a language, anyone that puts effort into learning a language is a good thing. And we should not be criticizing people over their level. This is, this seems to be something that is, is purely a YouTube phenomenon. You don't see this out in the real world. It's only on YouTube where you'll, where you'll have someone who's like I mean, even highly fluent in a language, but they'll still get comments saying, oh, well, you know, you're not C2. That you, I don't think you'd be able to talk about nuclear physics or whatever. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Yes, it's true that people, the Dunning-Kruger effect exists. People think they are higher than they are in a language. Yes, people exaggerate the language. Like, so be it. Like, who really cares? 
And you know what the conclusion I've come to from, from, from investigating this is that actually most people don't care. The internet's a funny place because people, he who shouts loudest gets the most attention. And often people who criticize polyglots online, they will get the most airtime because people like, a, you know, they like, they like a bit of a fight, you know. But I've also noticed that more often than not, people are inspired by watching videos of people learning languages, even if they exaggerate about their level, even if they are not as fluent as they say they are. It's just that the people who are inspired about this don't, aren't moved to, you know, leave gushing comments on YouTube about that. So yes, there are shenanigans about level and all of that, but I think people, most people who object, they do so on a kind of linguistic pride level. I understand that someone who is, for example, has invested years into learning, I don't know, Korean, probably isn't gonna appreciate much, a video of like someone standing on a street corner, like interviewing strangers in pigeon Korean that they spent two weeks learning. Like, no, they're not fluent, fine. I grant you that, but you don't need them to be fluent. Like you're fine just the way you are. You don't need to have this to kind of project these opinions on other people. And I think it's generally always a good thing that people are making videos about language learning. And there's a kind of silent majority out there who are inspired by this. You just don't hear from them as much as you hear from critics. So I think my advice for you around this is to focus not on other people, but about on, on you. Know why you are learning your language and what you want to achieve, because that then frees you from caring about what other people are up to. You know, some people prefer to speak three languages to a very, very high level. Others prefer to learn 15 languages or to a basic level, like to each his own. My basic position on this is that all language learning is a good thing. Who was it that said that a foreign language is the only thing in the world worth knowing badly? I completely agree. Don't let anyone tell you what you should be doing and don't listen to anyone who criticizes you for your level in a language. Except of course, it's not quite as simple as that because we're not just talking about people who are learning languages for themselves and uploading videos. People who upload language learning videos to YouTube more often than not are trying to achieve something on there. They're trying to influence people. They're trying to get views. They're trying to, you know, God forbid, make money or whatever other nefarious motive you want to ascribe to them. And people watching YouTube videos, they're looking for a source of information and advice that they can trust. And so people want Proof, and this leads to this, this this question of, well, if you say you speak the language, then why don't you make lots of videos in the language? Where's the proof? How do I know I can trust you? How do I know you speak those languages? And this is a quite common criticism of polyglot types, which is that you, know, you say you speak those languages, so why don't you make videos in all of those languages? And in general terms, like on principle, I think I tend to agree with that. If your whole shtick is, well, I know these languages, then why not have at least some videos in those languages? If you have none, then they are conspicuous, by their absence, you know, are they not? Now, I don't know if there are lots of people out there on, I don't know if there are armies of people out there on YouTube like claiming to speak a lot of languages with no proof. I don't spend a lot of time watching these videos. I certainly have seen some, I know they exist, but ultimately this comes down to, you know, if you're demanding this of people, then why is it that you are demanding this from people? And why is it that you have this need to see people demonstrating their language skills? Most people I see demanding this, you know, when it comes down to it, they're playing this game before, Who's the best polyglot? It's like a big kind of popularity contest. And for me personally, I have absolutely no intention of playing that game. That's not why I make YouTube videos. I understand it might be different for, for others. But for me personally, like if you want to listen to me, like fine, if you don't, no problem. I'm good either way. So I, I respect content creators who choose not to play to the crowd in that sense. But more importantly, I also think that looking for you know, the best in a language, like the best polyglot, the best Chinese speaker or whatever, as your source of advice, is the wrong game to play if what you're interested in is improving your own language learning. There's an assumption here, which is that the person who is best at the language therefore has the best method, therefore is the most credible, and therefore is the person that you should learn from. That is not the case. In my experience, the best speakers of a language or the best polyglots are often not the best educators, far from it. And the reason that is that in order to achieve great things in a, in a language, you have to generally be a quite unusual person. You have to devote extreme amounts of time or effort into doing something, which is not what most people can do or should do. So I would really caution you against seeking out proof of prowess in a language with the expectation that that is gonna lead you to the best method that you should use to learn your target language. Instead, look for the best educators those who are actually able to help you at the stage that you are at. Think about if you walk into a bookshop, for example, you know, you, you walk into a bookshop, you browse books, you choose the book you're gonna buy based on the contents and what you see there, not on the person that you, who wrote it, you probably have no idea who wrote the book that you're about to buy. Most people that, who buy my books in shops have no idea who I am. They, they only find me later on my website or on YouTube. Hey, by the way. And then there is the clickbait, everybody's favorite thing. Clickbait, where do we start? Nobody likes it, everybody hates it. And yet, 
you click it, don't you? You click it and then you watch it and then you go in the comments and you complain about it, don't you? You do that. I know because I do it too. Clickbait is, I think it's just the world that we live in. In many ways, I think it is the price that we pay for all the free stuff that we have. In many ways, things like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, they work because you can get people to click stuff. And then as a result, advertisers get to show ads and they make money. It is an unfortunate development in the world of the internet, and yet it is what it is. Newspaper headlines have been doing the same thing for hundreds of years. My favorite point about the clickbait problem came from Days of French and Swedish, who left a comment on the original post in my community tab on my channel. And he said of the algorithm, people blame the algorithm, but there is no algorithm other than the viewers. You could make a video that was algorithm perfection, but if people don't click on it, it will flop. And that's the point. Clickbait only exists because, my friends, you click on it. And the irony here is that the internet is full of content that presumably you don't like. So why get angry about the language stuff? I mean, as an experiment, open up YouTube in incognito mode, have a browse and see the trash that people are actually watching and spending their time watching. You don't spend your days deliberately watching flat earth videos and then complaining about them, I'm guessing. For us, Language learning is personal. We care about language learning, and we therefore don't like videos that use shock tactics about the thing we care about or somehow exploit national stereotypes, which are things that you do see. But clickbait videos, they're just entertainment. It's nothing more, nothing less. It doesn't need to be taken seriously. And I think the mature approach here is to recognize this is what it is, it's just entertainment, and move on. Now, you might think that so far in this video, I've been rather kind to YouTubers. Do you agree? Well, yeah, I, and I guess this is mostly because I remember life before YouTube. I remember life, I was learning languages before the internet was a thing. So I find it quite confusing when I'm kind of confronted with all this anger that people seem to bring to it on YouTube. I mean, do you think people are right to be angry about it? Let me know in the comments. Yes, it is the outlandish claims, and you know what I'm talking about here. I learned French in seven days. Here I am speaking fluent Spanish after six weeks. And these for me are a different category of problem to the areas we've already talked about, which are people just exaggerating their level or maybe not giving proof that they speak the languages that they say they do. To actually make active claims that you can learn to speak a language or you can learn to be fluent in something like seven days or, or six weeks is a different thing. Now, I do take a kind of libertarian approach to this. I, th I do think that people should be allowed to make videos about whatever they want, providing it's not violent or aggressive. I think you have the right to make these videos. But as a language learner, I deeply dislike these videos because I consider them to be barefaced lies. But beyond that, I recently became aware of the harm that these videos are actually doing to language learners. Now, earlier we talked about how I don't believe that the best speaker of a language is necessarily the best teacher. And the reason is because like method is not king and method means a different thing for everyone and different people. You need to use different methods and need to understand what those methods involve. And for the same reason, people making outlandish claims about what is possible can cause absolute misery. Now, my DMs in Instagram or emails like are flooded with people sending me uh, clips of someone who says, I learned French in seven days and say, Ollie, I've been learning French for two years and, and I still can only just just about understand a movie. What's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Please, I need help. And and I think I just want to give this person a big hug. And I want to I want to tell them these are lies. This is not true. And even if they are they find a way of making it technically true, it is so exaggerated as to not be any representation of what's possible or realistic in real life. So and I find, I confess, I'm only recently becoming aware of the scale of this problem because I do think it you know it's easy for me to say as someone who has learned a lot of languages before I don't need to take these 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 kind of claims seriously but I understand that people coming at language learning for the first time are looking for help looking for advice and they're seeing this and they are taking it seriously and it is a real problem now, as you would have gathered by now I do have a lot of time for people who are just trying to make cool content on the internet I do but I also believe that content that makes outlandish claims about what's possible in the space of seven days or six weeks can genuinely be damaging. Although I have to admit that even on those types of uh, content, you will still see people in the comments saying, man, that's so inspiring. Thank you for making this video. Now I have more belief in what I can do. So it really is a mixed bag. And this topic needs to come with a healthy dose of nuance and it is not black and white. But this is generally why on the whole with this topic, I come down on the side of it's a good thing. But there are a few things that I think we need to remember. First of all, we need to remember that language learning is a positive thing and a force for good in the world, wherever it occurs. We also need to develop a strong sense of why we are learning ourselves so that you can develop the ability to trust yourself and trust your own 
judgment. We also need to learn to acknowledge and recognize what is simple entertainment and to accept that entertainment for what it is. We also have to have a healthy skepticism of claims that sound a little bit outlandish because they probably are. Lastly, we also probably need to spend a little less time on YouTube. But since you're here, you should probably watch this video, which YouTube thinks you'll probably quite enjoy.